Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Hi, Thank everybody. you so much for <laughs> letting us in to your home, boat, right. bus. What else you could look we awfully watch? dapper today, I gotta say. You're matching, everything's well, matching. Thank you. And we don't look clash. Very nice. We don't clash, do no, we? No, we don't. We're not, not too bad today. Every once in a while, we hit it. <laughs> That's true. We have a young lady with us today. We do. She, um, she was born in the same year, just different location of that year, as I. And you. Not the same no, decade. No, I said. Same decade you're talking about? Yes. Okay. We have Judy Becker with us. She's, She's going to tell us more about herself. She's a writer. That's right. Blatant Christianity. That's quite a title. I well, like that. Talk a little bit well, about it. Well, she her. was, like it says here in my notes, she was born in the early 30s and has watched the world prepare the stages for its own end, which I think is very interesting. Wow. She has a degree in geology, which has prepared her for her first work an exposition of the book of Revelation. She has spent 45 years majoring on the natural catastrophes mentioned in the Bible. So let's hear about what she says, because she is a lady she is. of much wisdom. We're going to go over and say hello. Physically here. <laughs> and she hello. has, and you have a ranch where you have horses on it, huh? Well, it's not really a ranch, <laughs> it's just, she well, calls it a farm. A, 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 I, I like the word ranch because it just, how many acres do you have? 11. Oh. No, 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 that's 11 pasture acres. Okay. I have 17 and a half. Okay, I, well, you know, we'll call that a ranch. That would be a ranch. <laughs> well, years ago, I had a guy out in Nebraska, I think it was. He had 20,000 acres. Whoa. <laughs> I can't, can you conceive of that? Mm -mm. Unbelievable. I just wouldn't want to have to take care of it. <sighs> yeah, really. So did you enjoy writing this? Oh, I did. Uh, this is something that I've taught for 30 years. Uh, mm. All kinds of ages, all the way from little kids all the way up to young adults. Yeah. And every age in between and women's groups. So, you know. so do you speak the same way to little kids as, as adults? No, I get a little bit more graphic and I act like a ham. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you can do that on here. Okay, because we have all ages watching. Okay. Uh, I just wrote that the Old Testament, in fact, these are your words, the Old Testament laws, if broken, brought condemnation. Right. And what are you trying to tell us? Well, Jesus' laws go beyond, and they tell us how to live in the positive sense. Okay. And, uh, and when you do live by his laws, then you develop the fruits of the Spirit and become like him. Wow. Can my vast audience out there, can you hear her all right? You can't hear her. Uh -oh. So they're, either you're talking too low or my sound mind has just completely cut mm, the sound well, out. Well, I don't, I have to shout. Yeah, it's <laughs> really get happy. Okay. okay. In fact, your words too, the New Testament laws, if kept, bring blessings and rewards. They do. So it's interesting. The old, if broken, brought condemnation. New Testament, if kept, bring blessing and rewards. Rewards, yes. I got to find out the title. It, it's amazing. It's kind of interesting to me. Blatant Christianity. Right. How did you come up with that title? I wanted it to be in your face. And I think that's what Christianity should be. It should be so different from the world mm -hmm. that you can't miss it. And that's why I chose that title. You know, it, it, what, what you're saying is kind of interesting because, and, and I think it, more years ago than even now, if you were sitting with a born-again a, a born believer and they came into the group that you were in, without them saying anything, you would almost immediately know they were a believer. You could sense it. You could, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we we often experience that in a restaurant sometime. You, you kind of, you go in a nice restaurant or whatever and you kind of look around and you kind of try to scope out who's in there or whatever. And it is interesting when you'll sit there and you'll go, you know, honey, I, I got a feeling that couple's Christians. 
just there's something that happens. I don't know whether uh, there's a response that they have or body language or whatever, but right. it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yes. Do you do the same thing? Well, I had an experience when uh, my husband and I traveled to India and we were at a stopping off place in Singapore, either there or Hong Kong when you go to this particular place. And there was a man on the plane as we were flying in who was an Indian and I was witnessing to it. And he was just, you know, resisting. So it just so happened that when we went to leave, there he was going out on the same plane we were. And uh, we had a wait, and we were all sitting, and we were sitting with him, and I was picked up where I left off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was witnessing to him. And this line of people that were already ahead of us were going past, and this lady said, you better listen to her. She's telling you the truth. Really? And, and so they kept on going, and, and we went on, and he went his way, and I went mine. I couldn't tell if he ever heard of me or not. But we got into the uh, airport, or the, you know, the place you wait for the next change of planes, and uh, we were just walking around. This man came walking up to us, and he said, uh, you're Christians, aren't you? I said, well, how can you tell? <laughs> and he said, well, I heard you witnessing to Isn't this. Isn't that amazing? This man, and turned out that he had been in Kuala Lumpur, and in a, con in a conference and preaching, he was a preacher, he turned out to be the son of, of Leonard Ravenhill. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> so what? he gave us a card and he told us everything that was happening and we knew. For you don't know that, that he's a great author yeah. that, that she just mentioned. Yes, go ahead. Oh yeah, he is. He, he wrote a book about revival yeah. that, and yeah. most people know yeah. and I read it too. Mm -hmm. At least we know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Continue. And so I just thought that was, it's, it's amazing how God will bring people yeah. together. Yeah. And of course, now that was a blatant in itself in hearing somebody witnessing to somebody. It is. Yeah. So he, he knew, he really knew. Right. You know, to uh, continue that, I was reading, uh, and I actually I heard a comment recently and reading about the same thing was the guy spend some time like you did just to share Christ and he after he finished and went on his way never met the guy again years passed well this guy just from that conversation later on in life because of what he had said to them committed his life to Christ mm -hmm. and became a phenomenal Bible teacher and a minister and he and his comment was I often when I go to these conferences where he's speaking I often look out into the crowd and wonder is that fella someplace here so that I could thank him for what he did for me the guy had no idea because he thought that he just planted the seed but nothing happened isn't it interesting? Yeah. So, well, you know, when we get to know. heaven, we'll find out those yeah. things. Yeah. That's exactly because the Lord right. is keeping records. That's part of the reward. Yes, yeah. that's wonder, right. That, that's a, I think we forget that sometimes. It, we plant the seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And He takes care of what, because that's all we can do, because He's right. the one that saves, not us. Right. That's right. And so, uh, you know, I mean, we can say, I prayed with somebody and they accepted Christ. I just, I actually, <laughs> it happened just just recently. Uh, somebody was saying, you probably don't remember, but you uh, shared Christ with my daughter, and she prayed to accept Christ, but her life is not even close. And w when I was hearing the story again, I thought, that's one of my converts. <laughs> okay, Christ converts. They go on to what this guy did with his life. Yeah. But sometimes we have our converts. They pray with us. They truly are not born again. No, I know that's happened. Yeah. Uh, soul and spirit. You identify their functions. What is the function of the soul and the spirit? Well, the uh, way I understand it, I, I got most of that material from Watchman Nee on his books, The Another Spiritual, great author. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, spiritual right. yeah. Man. Yeah. I have and, a lot of his books. And 
I felt like if that was explained to a new believer or even an unbeliever, they would suddenly see more behind what is in the scripture. Yeah, you talk about the spiritual man and the old man. Right. You know, I had a, a young student in one of my children's classes that grabbed a hold of that. I had a picture of what the old man, and I fit it over top in, in a planal graph with the new man, yes. you know. And he picked up on that, and he every time he'd meet a preacher, <laughs> he'd say, do you know about the old man? <laughs> wow. And if he said that to me, I'd say, yeah, he's right there on my shoulder every day. <laughs> but it, isn't it amazing how, how that does stay with you? It does. And I remember when I discovered that, and it was a good ways down the line before I realized that. And I, I wanted people to identify the differences between the old man and new man because there are two modes that you can live in. And if you don't live in the spirit yeah. and you fall back into the old man, nobody's going to see Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. And when people were passing you and you were sharing Christ, they were, they were seeing Christ in you because that's the message. Yeah. We well, carry we that message that. Yeah. to the next person. Uh, you talk, you talk about uh, when is the soul formed and, and then where is the soul? Right. Uh, what can you share? Well, the Bible speaks of the soul in two different ways. Uh, you, it will talk about a soul as a certain person, right? like uh, just talking about a man. Yes. Or it will talk about in, uh, what is it, Thessalonians, where it says the, that your whole body, soul, and spirit might be kept until the coming of Christ. And your, your soul is the most inner part. It's your thinking and your will and your emotions. And you- Is the soul the spirit? No. Okay. That's the thing I think people are confused about. The, the spirit is the, the communication between you and God. But when you're first born, you, your spirit is dead toward God because it doesn't have, it, it's sinful. And until you meet Christ, you really don't have a living spirit that communicates with God. That's the only way he can really communicate with man yeah. today. And he only can do that because Jesus died. And he sent his spirit afterwards to be a gift to us through grace. You know, uh, you, you've heard that song, It Is Well With My Soul. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the father uh, that got on a ship one day and passed over the area going back to England. And they said this was the area that that ship went down where his family was on the ship. Oh. And, and he penned those words as he was looking over the side of the ship. Oh, it, is well, it is well with my soul. Yeah. And that is such a, uh, I've had that experience a few times where, where I can actually say, it is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have everything together at that. I mean, <laughs> I wish I could say that all the time, but yes. you've got to have things together right. when you're able to say that. And the closer we get, I was just sharing uh, with our director, uh, Dave Martin, at my age, and I was sharing this with Sharon as we were driving uh, over the weekend, that we're at, uh, at the 11th, 11.30 hour of our life. Midnight is, you're done. <laughs> really? You know? And, you know, but I, I mean, know I mean, every day. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, at 75, you're kind of at 11.30, and it's ticking. And when you think of things, and I'm sure you understand this too, when somebody says, well, I'll see you in five years, I'm going, hmm. uh, maybe, maybe not. Right. Like our grandkids, I'll be with, finished with college maybe five to ten years or whatever. They, you, I hope I'm there. So you're thinking in a whole different way yeah. when you re reach a certain age. People are watching right now in their 30s. You think just like I did in my 30s. It's like, forever. I got 20 years. I got. <laughs> yes. Somebody says, I'll see you in 20 years. Okay. 
<laughs> but somebody says to you and I, I'll see you in 20 years, we go, oh, really? Well, you, you hope that you'll live at least as long as your parents did because of genes. Yeah. But my dad lived to be 93 and a half. Did he? And all of his sisters Was reached it, their 90s. Have, did he have quality of life? Oh, yeah, until he got a little confused at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But up until then, he had good health. Yeah. That's, t to me, uh, that's why we, we have so many health shows, is because t to have Christians take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit, to, you know, to have quality of life, that's, that's part of what God wants us to well, do. I sure do. I just, I really enjoy my life. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. It's, it's obvious. <laughs> That's right. I can tell it too. You, you talk about uh, the, the fact that the body has five senses. Uh, the spirit has four. Well, as far, as far as I know, I think Bill Gothard's come up with another one, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> yeah. I haven't discovered it yeah. yet on my own. Did you miss that one on that large screen when, you, when he's having those? Ever gone one day well, seminar? Well, no, this, this tur turned out to be later. I heard it from somebody who okay. worked in his, in his uh, uh, ministry. Yeah. Well, on, on this particular one, I, I was, I was kind of fascinated by, by your book, uh, page 20. It says... Uh, the uh, the body has five senses, as I said. The spirit has four: two to interact with the mind, and two to interna interact with the emotions. The first one, the first is creative imagination, which mimics God's creativity. Really. And uh, the second is uh, intuition, the ability to receive knowledge from the spiritual realm, completely apart from the natural perception of the body. And then you go on, third, fourth, and so forth. Very uh, interesting because it's not what you read all the time. It's a breakdown of what we take for granted. Right. Well, some people don't really understand the difference between the soul and the spirit and, and the mind and yeah. all that. But you know, I went through the scriptures, well, I think I said that in the book, and looked up every word for soul wow. in the Old Testament and looked at the words and some you know sometimes the words are translated differently but they're the same word in the original language mm -hmm. and in every case it boiled down to mind will and emotions for the soul right. but the spirit the spirit's a communicator you say your words uh, the spirit processes or, or excuse me, the spirit possesses its own body. Yes, I believe that. First Corinthians fifteen forty four, for just as uh, there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. Right. That's in uh, First Corinthians fifteen forty four. Right. So, what do you mean? Well, uh, there have been a lot of people that have given testimony of being out of their body while they're in a situation where they're near death right. and they can watch them operate on them. Some people have actually been carried into the heavenly realm, just he's, like Paul. Yeah. And he said he didn't know if he's in his body or not. He couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. And the reason was he had a spiritual body. And uh, when you go to Ezekiel, when he was carried, he was in his own home sitting with the elders. And Ezekiel 11, 24, if they want to prove. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I don't always remember yeah. the address. But he was picked up by hand. He's, he was picked up by the lock of his hair. Now, imagine somebody being picked up by the lock of their hair in the natural. I guess he had hair. <laughs> I guess he did. <laughs> but anyway, the, all he saw was the hand. And, of course, that's one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is the hand. Because Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Well, he's got four fingers, but then they're all in there. But that's a side. Uh, but Ezekiel was actually literally taken in his spirit body to the location to see it himself. It wasn't a vision that he could have seen because it mentions both the going away and the coming back mm -hmm. to where he started. And so he was an eyewitness 
to these elders to the condition that Israel was in, in the land. And uh, of course, you know, uh, he, he says that he, re, you know, he was returned and he came back. And John states plainly when he's taken to heaven for the revelation. Does that happen today? I think so. I'm reading a book right now where somebody's claiming that, but I'm not real happy with how he's talking about it. I'm yeah. wondering if the I, enemies a, come out with some things. Yeah, I've read a lot of, I, I, I get a lot of books sent to me. And uh, I start reading them and I'm going, eh, just <laughs> don't yeah, know. Yeah, you if, have to be discerning. Yeah, yeah. you really, yeah. And, and yet I, I talk to so many Christians and I want to grab them going, Stop being so gullible, yeah. you know, because well, I right. mean, some yeah. Christians. It I has mean, to measure with the word. Absolutely, it always has yeah. to measure with the word. But, once, but if you get into groups where they're telling more stories than they are uh, quoting yeah. the word of God right. or laying the word of God alongside what they're talking about, you can become part of that. It's almost like you're telling things that, well, can you show me in the Word of God? And they'll look at you like that you're almost uh, not believing them. Yeah, and I that you're doubting God's power and ability. Well, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, where in the Word of God do you confirm this? That's well, the only way you could do it was with Ezekiel, Daniel, not yeah. Daniel, Ezekiel, John, and Paul. They're the only ones mentioned that were carried yeah. up into yeah. those realms. But you know, I have a friend, uh, he's written several books actually. Uh, he had a near death experience. His heart stopped. He literally died, I think, about four times before they got him settled. And he's blind. And he's what? He's blind. And he, he saw things. Yeah for those few seconds or minutes or whatever it was, he saw a whole crowd full of joy running and he joined them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I had an out-of-body. Did you? Yes, many, many, many. Everything is many years ago in my <laughs> life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but I, I never, tr I mean, I could have probably gone on the road and started preaching, but, but, but you know, like so many do. Yeah, but right. I, I never attributed to Maybe I read too much or whatever, study too much, but, but, but I attribute that we've got stuff stored in our brain. Right. You know, things that we've wanted to accomplish or things that we've thought about or books that we've read and so forth. And the brain, which is so phenomenal, when you go into these traumatic things and your brain, and, and you, you leave, your heart stops for a moment and you leave this place that we're in right now, you know, I just attribute that a lot of that will flood back into your mind and you will look at it as, oh my goodness, I had an out-of-body experience. But I actually did, and the experience was the greatest thing <laughs> that I've ever had did since. Did you see anything when I, you were in that Just ex people that were, like, like, like if you were the person that I was with. Yeah, right. Uh, I, was, I was communicating not this way, no, you couldn't. but by thought. Oh, really? We communicated by thought. For example, as I'm looking at you, you would know exactly what I what I'm meaning, what I'm talking about. We're not we're, you don't hear the sound or whatever, and and you're accepting every and it's like it's, well, it's did the most. Well, they have the same experience? Yes, same thing. Oh wow! But when I started leaving, like if you had the most shocked look on your face that you could ever imagine, that's what they had. And I'm wondering why is this beautiful atmosphere being broken? And then I realized that I was coming back into the body. You didn't feel it? Didn't feel it, no. Well, I f had a dream one time, and I had this sort of halfway experience, like I felt my spirit slipping out. Huh. And it scared me because I knew about that. And I said, I'm not ready to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was right back where I was. <laughs> it didn't happen. Wow. But you I say, felt it. I you could say, feel it. You say in your book, anger opens a door in the spiritual world for demons. It does. Anger. It does. A lot of people with a lot of anger stored up inside. Right. But when you get into a real strong confrontation and you lose your temper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah.
Yeah, I know. And then I've, once they get in, they don't want to leave, and I've, it gets habitual. Isn't it funny? We, yeah. we talk about losing our t temper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. It'd be, nice, it'd be nice if that's what actually happened. You're right. Yeah. Then that would mean don't ever go back and try to find it. Yeah. You right. lost it. Yeah. But I remember sharing, you know, 55 years of marriage, a lot of com comments. And what she'll say is, you know, when I've gotten really angry, she'll, she'll say to me, I don't know you. It's, it's right. like another person is, is there. It's right. And that's why you got to have to be really cognizant of <laughs> my husband this is not what God wants. was doing this a lot to me, and I started praying. And I said, Lord, you got to do something about this, you know. And he went off to a men's conference, and he came back, and he was different. Wow. And I said, the Lord set you free from something while you were gone, didn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got this real sheepish look on his face. He said, mm. Wow. <laughs> we got a couple of minutes left. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. 60 seconds <laughs> in each one of them. Okay. That's your camera right there. Share Christ with somebody. Oh, you need to have the Savior. If you have the Savior, you have everything that's important in life. He takes care of you. I'm a widow of nearly 17 years, and I have yet to lack anything because he cares for me. He will do that for you even if you're young. <laughs> you don't have to be a widow. You share, you share your sins, and he will take them, and he will put them out of reach if you let him. But you have to make a personal contract if you want a personal relationship. And that's got to be believing that he died for your sins, not just the world, although he did, but for your sins alone. Amen. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Amen. But as many as receive him, to them yes. he gives the power to be called his son, his children. Do you want to be in the family of God? You said it at the beginning of this, we're not born Christians. No. But we become a Christian by accepting the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting him as our only way to heaven. And it's through that blood that we are forgiven once and for all. All of our sin are gone. And you can trust Him today. God bless you. You bye can't bye. be good enough. <laughs> Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.